Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of hemorrhoids in the anal canal. Here we can see two polypoid tissue pieces that are covered by stratified squamous epithelium. And these are serial sections from the same specimen. Let's have a look at this mucosa. And in this area, we can see that the overlying mucosa is stratified squamous epithelium and there is a thin layer of keratinization. This epithelium may be keratinized or non-keratinized depending on where the hemorrhoid is located. Also, if the hemorrhoid is more proximal, for example above the dentate line, then the overlying epithelium is usually that of large bowel mucosa. Here we can tell because of the stratified squamous epithelium that this is an external hemorrhoid and that means that this is below the dentate line. In some areas, as we see here in this piece, the overlying epithelium is eroded and we can see that this dilated blood vessel has actually reached the epithelial surface and this can be the cause of bleeding in hemorrhoids. Again, here we can see that this blood vessel has more or less breached the epithelial surface and this can give rise to bleeding. Beneath the epithelium, we can see these very prominent, congested, dilated and tortuous blood vessels. And within some of the vessels, for example this one, not only do we have red blood cells, we also have this pink fibrin deposition as well as inflammatory cells and this is the process of thrombosis hence these are thrombosed hemorrhoids usually when there is thrombosis within hemorrhoids the patient will experience pain so again in this vessel we can see the fibrin and inflammatory cells as evidence of thrombus formation the stroma around the blood vessels is composed of collagen tissue and we can see this pink collagen material and we also have some bundles of smooth muscle in between the collagen. Let's briefly learn a bit more about hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are a very common condition that occur usually in middle-aged to elderly adults with an equal gender predilection. And as mentioned earlier, they are classified according to location. Internal hemorrhoids occur above the dentate line and hence are covered by colorectal type glandular mucosa. External hemorrhoids occur below the dentate line and hence are covered by stratified squamous epithelium and they can sometimes be mixed internal external hemorrhoids and have both columnar as well as stratified squamous epithelium overlying the hemorrhoid. Clinically, there may be pain or they may be painless depending on the location as well as whether there is thrombosis where thrombosed hemorrhoids would lead to pain. And there may also be painless rectal bleeding during defecation as we saw sometimes the blood vessels can erode the overlying mucosa and bleed into the anal canal. There can also be prolapse of this tissue through the anus. Grossly, we have this mucosa-covered polypoid lesion with very prominent dilated congested blood-filled vessels in the underlying stroma and sometimes with paler fibrin thrombi. There is a separate video describing the gross features of hemorrhoids and this separate video as well as this fully interactive virtual pathology specimen and annotated pictures can be found in our free online pathology resource path web. The registration link is in the video description and registration is free. On microscopic examination, as mentioned, we can see this polypoid lesion that is covered either by large bowel type mucosa, stratified squamous mucosa and sometimes transitional type epithelium and below this mucosa we have these dilated congested vascular spaces filled with blood and sometimes with the presence of fibrin thrombi and as we saw earlier the intervening stroma contains fibrous tissue as well as sometimes smooth muscle bundles.
Here is the area of erosion of the mucosa that we can see with this large blood vessel, and this can give rise to bleeding per rectum. Hence, in summary, this is an example of hemorrhoids within the anal canal, and what we are looking at here is external hemorrhoids, which is covered by stratified squamous epithelium. Beneath the epithelium, we have these dilated, tortuous, congested blood vessels, some of which contain areas of thrombosis, and also we have focal areas where the blood vessels have eroded through the overlying mucosa, giving rise to bleeding per rectum. Thank you.